Mila daf samach tes. Yesterday we learned the three way machlekes. What happens if a zava gdoila, a woman who saw a ziva three days, must keep an additional seven clean days? Shivan akin. She must count every day, do a bdik every day. What if she didn't do so? She counted the first day she did a bdik on day number one of her shivan akim and day number seven. Do we fill in the gap? According to Rebbe we do. She has a chazaka since she counted on day one and day seven. All seven days count towards her nikim. Rabbi Shua says no. Only two out of the seven days count towards the nikim. One and seven. And therefore she must count another five days. And Rebbe Kiva says only the final day, day seven, which she counted, that's a proper count in the bdika. Let her continue counting another six days. The Gemara today discusses what if instead of counting day one and seven, she counts day one and eight. Since day eight is not part of the count, would Rabbi Yezer agree and admit that this is considered a chazaka? Or perhaps no. He only says there's a chazaka when it's day one and seven because seven is part of the count. Rav says, Rabbi Yezer in fact holds that all you need is one day. You need the first day. In addition to that, Rav says, all you need is the last day. But in our case, if you have the first day, then you don't need the eighth day anyways. So she's definitely tired. Rabbi Hanina says no. According to Rabbi Yezer, you need the first and the seventh day. You need to bracket the seven days. And the eighth day is not part of the count, so you cannot use the eighth day to bracket. The Gemara asks a question on Rav from the famous sugya of Toya and of Chavtes. Interesting case where a woman left us while she was pregnant, and she arrives when she's not pregnant. She had some sort of amnesia, an accident. She has no idea if she gave birth to a viable baby, to a miscarriage, whether she bled, how long did she bleed, she has no idea. In that sugya we discuss, it's possible to have a woman be titled 80 times, 100 times, there's a concept in the sugi called tefillah bizmana mitzvah. There's a mitzvah to go to the mikvah immediately when you're available, go, available to go. So if you're a zava, you can go in the daytime, so you should go in the day. But if you're nida, you can only go at night, so you go at night. So it's possible, since we don't know what this woman is, if she's a zava or a nida, she can possibly go to the mikvah twice in one day. We're discussing only the first week. The halacha is she goes to the mikvah seven days in a row because it's possible that every day since she showed up, is the eighth day after the birth of a boy. And for that, you must go to the mikvah. Sunday might be the eighth day, Monday might be the eighth day, etc. So every day she goes. According to Rav, that you don't need to count seven days. All you need is the first day. She doesn't have to count in front of us. All we need to know is that she does no dam. Why doesn't she go to the mikvah additional times for ziva? Perhaps she gave birth to a boy while she was a zava gedailah. And therefore, it's possible that today, when she arrived, is day seven of her Nikim and she goes to the mikvah. It seems like the reason why she doesn't go to the mikvah is because she has to count in front of us. So as a matter of fact, yes, she has to count in front of us only according to Rebbe Kiva. That Bryce goes according to Rebbe Kiva, but out, Rav goes according to the Chachamim who say that she doesn't have to count in front of us. Where do they say this? And it comes a very long raya that this is what Chachamim say. And the point of the raya is that if Chachamim hold that you, you have to count in front of us, then why does the sugi of Toya say that there, there's possibilities that a woman goes to the mikvah 11 times, 13 times, 9 times, 10 times, 15 times, different cases. If she must count in front of us, then there shouldn't be any case where she goes to the mikvah. Let her just wait in front of us 7 days, count 7 days, and then go to the mikvah once. What is all this going to the mikvah for 15 times? What are these cases? Well, we'll go through some of them. If a woman saw Dam, she comes to us and she says she saw Dam one day, she doesn't know when she saw it. It's possible it happened a week ago, a month ago, today. We tell her to go to the mikvah nine times. Seven times, perhaps today, is her final day of Nidos, and she has to go to the mikvah. And like that, for the next seven days, perhaps today is the first day of Nida. So she goes to the mikvah for seven days. And she goes two days to the mikvah for Zava, and that's in the morning. Tefillah is not a mitzvah, so you go earlier in the day. Why Zava? Perhaps she saw a dam today, and therefore she's a Zava Ketana, and she must go to the mikvah tomorrow. Perhaps she saw a dam yesterday, and she has to go to the mikvah today. If a woman sees, for instance, Ben Hashemoshes, so you add two more tefillahs, because we don't know when Ben Hashemoshes, if it belongs to yesterday or today, so you add one for Nida and one for Ziva. So you have eight for Nida, three for Ziva. If a woman sees three Re'iyos or more, and she doesn't know if it's Ziva days or Nida days. Therefore, and, and she did a Svira, she counted, she checked, but she doesn't remember how much. Allah says she goes to the mikvah 13 times, 6 for Nida and 7 for Ziva. We'll skip ahead 
towards the end of the sugya, or actually this is the beginning, a very interesting story. The Gemara wanted to say that if a woman doesn't see any dam at all, she should go to the mikvah 15 times. Says Rava, this is a din that doesn't have a dye, there's no din here. This is a din that belongs in Zdaim. And he brings a great story. There was a law in Zdaim that if you don't own an axe, then you have to graze everybody's oxen for two days. But if you own an axe, then you only have to graze other people's oxen for one day. There was a poor little orphan who didn't have oxen, so they said, hey, you have to graze our oxen for two days. The orphan was a smart guy. And he took the oxen and he shechted them, he killed them. And then he announced, he said, whoever owns an axe gets one hide, whoever doesn't own an axe gets two hides. So he said, what, what kind of logic is that? We understand why you killed our axe, but why give away two hides to somebody that doesn't own an axe? He said, well, I use your logic. The one who doesn't have always does better. He either has to graze for two days or he gets two hides. The Mishnah tells us that if there was an object under a stone and on top of the stone there was Tumah, the object under the stone becomes Tamei Bimasa. It lifts up, so to speak, the the tuma that's on top of the stone. There's a law in the Mishnah that if a zav, zava, mitzuras, and an end, your lettuce, are on top of the stone, and it's a huge boulder, it's a stone that you can't really move, the law typically is that whatever is under the stone does not, whatever is under the stone does not become tamay bimasa, because the stone is too heavy, you can't say that whatever is under the stone is lifting up the stone. However, in our case, in the Rabbanon, Whatever's on the stone is Tameh Gzeira because we're scared that perhaps, let's say, the Zav will faint. People will think that he's dead and they won't treat him with a proper Tumah. There's a Machlekes. Until what point does a Zav and Zava emit Tumah? One Madama says until his flesh decays and the other one says until his stomach splits open. A guy has halacha of a Zav while he's alive. But once he's dead, since the whole ziva is only the Rabbanon, that ziva expires. According to Bishamai, if a woman dies, she has an additional tumma of a nida, and according to Bishilo, she does not have a tumma of a nida unless she, of course, died as a nida. Have a wonderful day.